Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time I have the unboxing of the iPhone 15. Let's get started. This device is the basis of the entire current lineup that Apple has with the iPhone 15. We have iPhone 15 at the beginning, iPhone 15 Plus as a second step, iPhone 15 Pro, and finally iPhone 15 Pro Max. So let's take a look at uh, what Apple can offer us in this, which is the most basic model. Let's take a quick look at the box. On the sides it says iPhone and on the front it gives us a quick look at the front of this device. Let's unbox it. And here we have it, as you can see in the green color edition. Before continuing, let me tell you about its price. In Mexico, its price starts at 19999 On the screen, you see the reference price in dollars to give you an idea. Although remember that the prices here are not the same as there. It comes in a very nice variety of colors, which I think will be its strongest point. I chose the green color. And remember that there are also versions with more storage at a higher price. So, let's see what else is in the box. For starters, obviously we'll have here the device which in this generation comes with a matte glass that feels smooth to the touch. Actually this will be one of its main evolutions as it doesn't report that many changes compared to the last generation. However, this new glass finish, the truth is that I really like it. But before we continue talking about this device, let's see what else comes in the box. We have the new USB-C to USB-C cable. It's a braided cable that looks to me like it's going to have much better strength as opposed to the cable that we saw in the last generation. So this is also a major change and another major evolution that we see based on last generation. Now we have the USB-C port here. Although it's not high speed like we will find on the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. So this is the cable. And finally, nothing else, we've got the usual paper and the traditional sticker. That's all that comes in the box because it doesn't include a charger, so you'll have to buy that one separately. The maximum load supported by this model is 20 watts, so this would be the charger, although I repeat that it is sold separately. So let's close the box and take a complete look at the cell phone. The device is now set up, so let's start by giving you a quick tour of its main specifications. For starters, we have a weight of 171 grams, so it's one of the lightest devices out there. Its thickness is 7.8 millimeters, so it is also a very thin device and in this case retains an aluminum construction for its frames, unlike the Pro models that have bet on titanium. Similarly, it retains the switch unlike the Pro models that already incorporate the action button. The screen has a diagonal of 6.1 inches. It is a Super Retina XDR OLED screen and its resolution is 2556 by 1179 pixels. So it has a density of 460 pixels per inch. We are in front of a good screen in terms of display, brightness, colors, even remember that it has true tone, so the color is quite natural, very close to the color of the environment. The only major flaw that the screen has is that it is 60 Hz. In this price range, it is definitely unacceptable for us to have a 60 Hz display, which is not capable of displaying movements as smoothly as 90 or 120 Hz displays could. However, it seems that Apple is definitely determined to reserve that feature they call Pro Motion for the Pro models. What's new here is that it already has the dynamic island unlike the iPhone 14 that still came with the notch design, retaining Face ID here to have advanced facial recognition. In this part we will also find the front camera which is 12 megapixels with f1.9 aperture. Fortunately, it has autofocus and on the back we find the new 48 megapixel camera with f1.6 aperture, an equivalent focal length of 26 millimeters, so it's a considerably good camera. And then we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with an equivalent focal length of 13 millimeters and f2.4 aperture. 
However, this ultra wide camera has fixed focus unlike the pro models and of course we don't have a special third camera for zoom. Although by integrating a 48 megapixel resolution on the main sensor, Apple is able to crop and maintain a very similar quality to the optical quality, then offering us 12 megapixel 2x zoom photographs with a good quality. Also, remember that these lenses come protected with sapphire, so in that sense the experience is very advanced. But let's take a quick look at the pictures we took. For starters, this is a screenshot, so you can see that in the preview before taking a selfie picture it still doesn't look very well optimized. For example here you can't see the tree trunk, but when you already took the picture it seems to do a better processing. Although through the camera it still burns this area due to the HDR display that the iPhone has. However, if we lower the brightness a bit, you will notice that now it is well balanced in lights and shadows. And I insist that the HDR screen allows to project with much more brightness the areas that had more illumination to give more realism when viewing them. Look at this other example how these areas of the window increase their brightness considerably. Then, take good pictures with the front camera. This is a picture with the main camera and this is a picture with the ultra wide camera. It definitely gives us a lot of width. It's one of the widest cameras on the market and that's a very positive aspect. Look at this other picture which is taken from exactly the same point as this picture and it's definitely very wide. However, the camera can't focus on such small objects. This is as close as you can get it to focus. The solution you might find would be to apply some digital zoom and thus try to notice more detail. But there are other devices that allow you to get even closer and can focus thanks to their ultra wide autofocus camera. Although honestly, the level of detail we get with this device is also spectacular. But one of the major improvements of this generation will be the zoom. Notice how I can zoom in little by little and the maximum zoom is 10x. Honestly, for the price range the zoom can still come up short compared to other manufacturers. But compared to what we had previously on the iPhone 14, look at the difference. The iPhone 14 went up to 5x digital zoom. iPhone 15 goes up to 10x. But even at 5x zoom we still see a higher level of detail in iPhone XV photography. So yes, there is an improvement, although I think the biggest rival to iPhone 15 will be the iPhone 14 Pro. Because it is compact and has better specifications in many areas. Therefore, this device seems to me a bit of a strange proposal by Apple, although I think that's why they have removed the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max from their official catalog, since it was very difficult to compete against that alternative. But if you still find the iPhone 14 Pro on sale in any store, I see it more recommendable. The processor that this new generation has is the Apple A16 Bionic, so also in that sense we see an evolution. Let's do a quick test so you can sort of see the performance that we could achieve with these three different processors. Apple A15 Bionic, A16 Bionic and A16 Pro in the iPhone 15 Pro. Here you are seeing the results. As you can see, it practically goes a thousand point evolution in multi-core with each year. Since the processor that has the iPhone 15 Pro will be the processor that has the iPhone 16. Two generations ago, Apple made this decision that the base models were no longer going to have the processor of the most recent generation. All in all, I think it's a good device, albeit a bit more expensive than I'd like, and with its strongest competitor at home being the iPhone 14 Pro. Although it must also be said that it has another quite interesting competitor called Galaxy S23 which unlike Apple's proposal does offer three cameras with a special one for zoom. Although its processor may not be as powerful as Apple's but let me know in the comments if you would like a comparison between these two tremendous devices. For the moment we have reached the end of this video. If you liked it you know you can tell me about it and we'll see you next time.